Alrighty, so this lesson is to do with multi-factor authentication and conditional access. So we go about setting those up, coming to your 365 admin center. So that's admin.microsoft.com, log in, come over to setup, you'll see all this sort of stuff here. <clears throat> so this isn't started yet. Click on there. Get started. Alright. So Enforce multi-factor authentication. Go to next. Now you don't really need to do a whole lot because it will just do it for you. Save the configuration. So basically what this is doing it's configuring our mfa template all right so require mfa for admins no legacy sign-ins that don't support mfa are allowed external and guest users must use mfa and internal users except for admins must use MFA. All right, go next. Okay, so our user exemptions are the main admin account that you set up. Right your tenant with. Now the reason for the exemption is so you don't get locked out. Now you can have a really great set of conditional access policies that will allow people to log in and allow everybody including all admins to log in even if there are no exemptions. This works great up until Microsoft decide to read IP addresses from the wrong geolocation and then start locking everybody out. So always have at least one account that you can break in and change things with. All right, so Manage conditional access. Let's open the new tab if we can. No, we'll just hit done. Uh, it was easy. Go away. Okay, so that one is completed. You can see the other here. That's now completed. For conditional access, your identity. Uh, protection, conditional access. All right. Okay, so we've got five policies now enabled. These are all ones. that we just configured with that last setup that we did. All right, so let's take a look at what it's done. <coughs> right, so specific users included and excluded. Right, so select directory roles, it's picked 21 of these 
roles for us. And you can see global administrator is in there. Good. We don't want, <clears throat> we don't really need it for that account. And uh, yeah, that's our one excluded account, which is the one I'm currently logged into. Target resource, all cloud apps. Grant, require MFA. All right, we can come back and make this stronger, I guess. But um, for the time being, there's just one thing that I want to do. So you pick country's location. I'm going Australia because that's where I'm from. Include unknown. And there you have it. Now we can come back to our policies. Alrighty. So we are going to configure locations. So we go to selected location and select the one that you just created. Um, actually, no, that was wrong. You go any location. Um, no, actually, no. Exit. <clears throat> we need a new policy. Um, I was trying to piggyback it onto another one, but then I realized that it's just going to allow all logins from that location. You can do that, right? So I'll just use a made up IP address to show you how you can do that. Right, so you go users, all users, put an exclusion on. Right. All cloud apps. <laughs> uh, locations. Any location exclude. Uh, grant. You want to block. And create. Right, so I've just effectively blocked all logins from outside of my country. Uh, right. Yeah, so that will determine what a high risk user is. So you got risky sign-ins. They're ones that are like admin level sign-in, logging in from a new location. And if it happens too frequently, they'll be upgraded as a high risk user. As will people who constantly get their accounts fished. <laughs> they will get moved as a high risk user. Uh, right. Now the other thing that you would probably want to do, so let's talk about this one. Uh, so we want IP range location. So you go, um, 
uh, you, you can call it whatever, but we'll just call it corporate network. Alright, mark as trusted location. And then let's just say you've got a static IP address. And it's like 185, 56, 98, 35. Alright, you want to put this little slash 32 at the end and tell it that it's just that IP range. So it's one IP address only. Alright, so I mean, this is just a made up IP. It's probably someone's IP address somewhere. But that's okay because I'm not about to give him unrestricted access to my tenant. Uh, the policies, new policy. So, um, now, yeah, in my login from right. So you go. All you, all cloud apps. Uh, location figure selected corporate network you just go grant and don't tick anything right. yeah and that will let them through uh, session That's done. Now we'll just leave that as uh, off. <laughs> uh, not going to let me not do it. Okay. Um, okay then. So it's not a new policy. We'll just do it from here then. The conditions, locations, and then you hit the exclusion and hit that. All right. So we've now just excluded our IP from here. And you would hit save, but I don't want a fake IP address gaining access to all this unrestricted without MFA. It's kind of a silly thing to do anyway, but you know, if you're an admin and you know, you're constantly logging in and out of something. It, it's very cumbersome and tiring to have to multi-factor your way through everything. Like, <clears throat> I probably waste about 25 minutes out of every eight hours I work going through multi-factor authentication. That is just, it does my head in. It's a daily thing that gets me. So, if you want to, uh, you can you can configure session limits, all the users. Um, well, we're not really locking anything out. I don't need any exclusions, but we can go all cloud apps. Go locations. Right. 
Right, let's just do two. We'll set up two. So you've got uh, locations, any location. Client apps, we don't want legacy anyway. These ones, browser and mobile, desktop. All right. So the devices. Right. So if the device is compliant equals false. So that just means it's not a device that's been managed as well. And okay, so like you can allow a managed device to just scroll on in. <laughs> it's good. Um, Right, so uh, grant access. Uh, yeah, we we'll just click. Session, we want session. So you go sign in frequency. They must re-authenticate once every day. You can set that. If someone is being a pain, you can set that and make them sign in every two hours. <laughs> Not worth risking your job for. You can set that every time. And every time they want to do something. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I haven't seen this one. Yeah. All right. But that will make everyone. That will make everyone who's in any location have to sign in once every day. Right. And then one set that to all users all cloud apps locations for so anyone who's in this network all right. and apply it to those apps and anyone Right, so anyone who has a compliant device is excluded. I'm going to have to go back and check that I did the other one right. And then yeah, you would persistent browser session. You can be kinder to these people. Make them sign in once every two weeks. It's defaults.
Yeah, we have it set up at the moment. So I'm going to leave that as report only. Yeah. Yeah, so if there's is non compliant then they have to sign in every day. Uh what have we got here? Um, We want to include on this one. So if it is compliant, and in that location, so you can set strict policies for people working from home and. Yeah, so it can make it harder for them to just log in on any old device. Uh, you've got managers that um, like to hide laptops in cupboards because, you know, they don't want to give them back to the IT department. That device then becomes non-compliant. Well, your non-compliant device is going to be a real pain in the ass to whoever you give it to and they're going to complain non-stop. They'll bring it back to the IT department who will supply them with a compliant device and alleviate all the headaches. Right. That pretty much covers this topic. It's a very basic overview, but um, I mean, the conditional access is basically this. <laughs> what do you want it to do? Who do you want it to include? Who is excluded? All these, what do you, do you want them to maybe just, do you want them to maybe just log into 365 apps and that's okay. Right, I don't know, just. Have a look around. Yeah, you can set. Yeah, got user risk, got sign in risk, device platform set. So. Yeah, all right. So you can just go iOS. IOS, Mac OS, done, right, block, done. Now nobody can use their shitty iPhones on there. Yeah, I mean, it's report only, so it can, it, it will allow it, but it will report it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that is basically it. Then multi-factor authentication and conditional access. So then more stuff that you can do. Authentication methods. Yes. Yeah. So Microsoft Authenticator settings. You want to enable it so you can have push and passwordless authentication. Uh, 
Uh, you can enable the one-time password. All right, number matching. You don't get a choice with number matching anymore. <clears throat> Uh, option geolocation. Cool. Target all users. Alright, so I've just set up an enabled Microsoft Authenticator. It won't let me disable. Temporary. Cool. I guess because, yeah, there we go. Yeah, we haven't targeted anybody, so we just turn that off because email addresses can be compromised quite easily. People are all too willing to give their credentials away. Password protection. So you can lock people out, you can ban particular names from being allowed as a password. Registration campaign. Right. Set this to something higher. Uh, add an exclusion. Um, you want to put that on your service account. Strange. They didn't um, make that blue, so anyway. Oh, all strengths. Microsoft phone sign in. Microsoft Authenticator. Right, this is a custom policy that I made earlier. All right, so that allows passwordless MFA. And that's it. Okay. There's already a passwordless MFA. Take a look at what it's doing. Okay, so that allows Auto two security key set based or or phone sign. Now, come in and make Windows hello, that'll work. Right. 
can't not continue it on the policy yet. Okay. Hmm. Where have they changed that? Okay. If I am not capable. Right, okay. Um, this is another one as well. <clears throat> Self service password reset. <laughs> you want to enable new users to be able to reset their own password. Then you just set up. So, you can, I just need to choose two out of four available methods. Right, registration. Yeah. Okay, cool. On prem integration. This. Yes. Write back passwords. Then we need to get the provisioning agent and set that up as well. Never allow that. You can enable that, it can get quite annoying. But if you're doing this and you've only got a small amount of users and you know they're all run by you, do it. Because if that password gets reset and you didn't do it, will you get notified? Right. Custom attributes. There later. Right. Multi factor. Don't allow them to remember and <laughs> trust the device. Yeah. That you want to do. Uh, 
That pretty much covers all that. Next up, we'll probably go through the Identity Secure score and go through configuring all this sort of stuff. Like we'll see, do not exist passwords. I've already completed that. <laughs> That's just how I set that up. Because, um, it's just dumb forcing people to make a new password every 45 days or whatever some insurance dickhead decided. Enable password hash sync if hybrid. Already done that. Policy to block legacy authentication. We set that up just before. Let's see. Okay. It can take up to 48 hours before these changes even show. Um, but we've set that up. Just enabled that one. There it still says to address. We can yeah. We'll just have to wait for it. That's all good. Um, not really a whole lot more to go through. Um we do have an export error. It sorted itself out and it's saying a permission issue. But could be our um, service account just needs one more role added to it. Successful, successful. That was successful, and then yeah, issue on the admin account. Insufficient rights. That's okay, that's no big deal. We can sort that one out later. Uh, it's most likely to do with... Most likely to do with... This account not having enough access to modify this account. It's a hybrid identity administrator. If we were to make that a user administrator. It may or may not work. We'll soon see. But 
around here there was that error back in its export frames yeah still got the permission issues uh, most likely like I said that account doesn't have enough rights over that one and it would just be a matter of going through and we don't need that so we just go through it and find which permission it actually needs all right uh, time to wrap that one up um, yes yeah I will see you in the next lesson and we will go over yeah we'll go over these All right, so let's designate more than one global admin Should actually uh, yeah, go groups, not roles. That should be global admin. And it's going to force me to um, use multi factor now because that one's not part of any exclusions. Yeah. All right. See you in the next lesson.